Welcome to Field Talks Tech. Today I'm going to do an unboxing of a Two Trees SP5 high speed upgrade kit for my Sapphire Plus Two Trees printer. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look what we got in here. And it's nicely packaged. Here it all is. It's quite a substantial upgrade, quite a few parts to change. Um, I'll have a good look at them individually before we fit them and uh, tell you all about them. Let's have a look at the new mainboard. They've added a USB port, which is a really nice ad addition, being able to transfer files via USB stick rather than SD card. And the drivers are TMC 2209s, so that's a nice upgrade, nice and they should be quiet. I'll have a look what their default setting is and whether I'll change it or not, but we'll see later. This is the new screen. Fits in place of the old screen. Looks good. Let's see how it goes. New belt rollers, smooth belt rollers, no teeth on these ones, which um, does generate a bit of noise on the older ones. So I'm interested to see how much quieter it is. So this is the new hot end. Uh, I'll have a bit more of an in-depth look at this later. Got a uh, silicon sock on there and it's a much longer, deeper Volcano style heater block. Just going to have a, a bit of a closer look at this heater block and nozzle. They're nice and tight. Let's see what sort of heat break they're using. I haven't used the standard two series hot end for some time, so it'll be interesting to see how the improved version works. Now just have a look at this heat break. Let's see how far that's going. It's going right down to the nozzles, I guess. So we just have a standard heat break, not a bimetal heat break. I'm not sure why they haven't gone for a bimetal heat break in this day and age. Um, I think I'll be changing that. Um, they suffer too much from heat creep. We'll work that out when we fit it all. So uh, my Sapphire Plus is uh, not by any means standard at the moment. I'm running a um, a Red Lizard K1 hot end, um, which has been very good. Been printing with a 0.6 nozzle with great results for about a year now, but I can go to 0.4 as well. So whether I um, stick with this hot end for long or go back to the, the Red Lizard um, remains to be seen. If you're interested in uh, what upgrades I've done and uh, why I've chosen them, uh, leave a comment and I can put that, I'll try and put a video together for you to explain and show you how they've been done. Looks okay, it's um, all um, machined aluminium, so it looks quite nice. Call it small stepper. As you can see, I'm in the shed, and I've got it half pulled pieces. You'll get a better idea of how to fit the kit from putting it in than stripping the old thing down anyway. I've cut the slot for the USB port on the new motherboard, I'm gonna go change it out. I've opened up the box and taken the cover panels off. I've taken the whole hot end assembly off, ready to uh, change out. Yeah, so I've been using the IO mount, um, which I've been very happy with and as you can see I've been running a di Quite a different hot end for the from the two trees one. This is a red lizard hot end um, Much better by metal heat break good heat sink. I will probably go back to this But I will be using the, the new um, direct drive because it will fit straight onto this mount I've removed the screen the kit came with a new screen As you can see the new one the old ones have teeth and the new ones are smooth and that's because of the, um, it helped reduce the noise, I, I suspect, because they do, the belts at higher speeds do make quite a bit of noise across the teeth. It'll be interesting to see how, how it works. Oh, and this uh, little wrench came in the kit. And now these ones here have a little sp spacer between them, so you have to reuse the spacer. That's why I'm doing it on the side, not like facing down because I don't want to lose these little pieces and there it is there. That's it. And again don't forget to put the spacer between the two pulleys. I'm just going to remove the main board now. Okay, I'll remove the power wires first. You'll notice I have ferrules on these. I'm a big believer in ferrules, especially on high power circuits like these. And I have a video up about that actually, if you want to have a look. As a bit of a guide to help people out, it's, um, it's up on my YouTube channel. So that's the hot end, the heated bed, and the main power, all disconnected. Okay, 
I'll just remove the thermistors. It's great that two trees label all of these cables, which is really nice. One's for the hot end and one's for the heated bed. I'll take off the steppers. That's our hot end, our extruder, and our Z axis. Okay, get all that swim off. Uh, these are the end stops. X, Y, and Z. I had a bit of touch on there, so that's why that one's a different plug. But we'll come to, we'll put the bit of touch in later. I'm just going to run this as, with this end stop for now. That's how it came. Okay, there's the other bit of touch one. That's off. And that is the filament runout sensor. Take these fans off. That's the one and two fans. There we go. That's free now. And this is the mainboard cooling fan. I noticed with the upgrade kit we have um, two fans to cool the mainboard. So that's a nice upgrade. Okay, I'm just going to take the mainboard off the carrier plate. I will swap over the Wi-Fi module. Whether I'll use it, we'll see. <laughs> There we go. I thought I'll swap over here to go in. I'm just going to clean up the wiring a bit. I'm going to remove the um, filament runout sensor, which I don't need. The new one runs to the hot end in the new furnace. Uh, there's a couple of extension cables that came in the kit, which I'll need for the extruder. The, the cable that's on the hot end kit is too short. I uh, didn't realise, but the kit comes with a nice you, know, you definitely need the extender because it won't clip into the main board and it's not long enough so that's got to go into there let me do a copy of that's done and there's another one another extension for the filament runout sensor which now um, is in the hot end rather than on the frame like the old ones film protection and the filament runout sensor is in the third one back this way There we go. That's the e. e extruder, extruder. Except we've got a tangler knot in it. Okay, now the heated bed. Hot end goes into hot end zero. There's provision on this board for an additional hot end. But I've got one yet. But yeah, it's possible to do it. Plug in the fans, fan two. That is the Part cooling fans and fan one should be here. There we go, put fan one in there. This is a BL touch wiring, but I'm not going to hook it up yet because I'm unaware if the firmware supports it as yet or if I've got to download firmware. So I'll get the machine running with the kit as standard how it came and then I'll add the BL touch later. The Mr. Bed there, the Mr. Hot End there. This will be our. X, Y, and Z, minus Z positive. We have our end stops, and it's very hard to read down the motherboard, but it's actually is labeled down there X, Y, and Z will go in the next one. Put our Z1 and Z2 steppers on. Two Z, Z stepper motors. There's a Y, and now X up there. Now I've only got, I'll just put a cable tie around these to manage these cables, get them neat as I can. Rather like having my cable being neat, but it's quite often hard to man manage on um, a 3D printer. And just slot the motherboard back in. Line up all the slots. Right in. I forgot to put the screen cables on, but luckily I can fit it through the hatch in the top. They're done. Okay. I'll fit the screen. Just note there's insulated washers on these screws. And on the earth mount, 
for the screen board, on the board here there's an earth mount, has to have the, the nylon screw. So it prevents static electricity charges. Does that line up right? Okay. Very tricky to pull out this because the, the insulator has to sit behind and it falls out. So, yeah, there we go. Be quick to print. Yeah, one minute, one minute print for a three mil washer. Pretty good. Lucky I had another printer still going. <laughs> when fitting the screen, it's quite different to the other screen. In this has two cables that are the same. EXP1 and EXP2 and the other one just had a ribbon cable. EXP1 is the bottom connector here and it goes to EXP1 which is marked which is labeled on the on the on the screen but it's actually not lay, labeled on the main board. Okay yeah so I've just tied these cables up I've actually got a cable clip on the bottom so I've just 3D printed these cable tie hold downs just um, just to hold the cable from possibly falling into the belts, which we don't really want. Comes with an extra fan and a bracket to add two fans to the cooling for the main board. It sit up in here, which I'm going to have to manage my cables a bit different to fit in. So that'll go. Um, but they've given us leads to go right around to the power supply. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to go straight to the join the two fans together and go straight to the, the main board. The, it'll, it'll carry the current of two fans. This is nice dual wall heatsink with glue in between the layers. Can't see where it's going to go. Let's plug the rest of the cables in here. For the new hot end. That's our extruder. This is our filament. That's E to E. Mm, now my wiring's done. Put this on. This is a bit. It's going to be a bit more fun. So these covers are really handy. Because it gives you access to the box without turning over to put the cables in and out. For a major board change out you have to take the bottom off but just for access to the hot end wires and stuff you can do it just through here. So I've assembled the um, carriage, put the, the bar on the hot end onto it, yeah. make sure it hits the stop, you hear the click. That's our filament run out sensor built into the hot end, into the extruder. Yep. There we go, that one's in. And this one's gonna go around here somehow. That is a tiny plug. There you go. Got it. That looks all right, doesn't it? Put my two screws into that and we're done. Okay, I'm just gonna fit the belts. If you haven't done the belts on a Sapphire Plus before, pay very close attention when you take them off. Because they're, um, yeah, if you don't have a, there's no diagram in the book that comes with it. And if you pay attention while they come off, you'll be right. But it is awkward to get rid of these stepper motors from the, from the carriage, from the hot end. Round that pulley, backwards, round the tooth, the tooth belt, round the stepper motor. Okay, you got that? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go back to this one over here. So we're in the top pulley over here, get in the pulley and around the top pulley this side and around this one and back into the carriage. Because yeah, behind our tire clock. It's hard when they're, when they're slack because they make no move. I'm going to tie them back to each other like that. 
I don't know if they do the tension on this, but I'll have to wait till I get the other one on, I think. Can you get over there? Hang on. Can you just see what I'm doing? Oh, you can just see you're doing the same thing. Yeah. I'll have to turn the printer around again, though. Still makes noises. And the fan goes in just there. Just fit the cover. Oh, they're not countersunk ones, they're not. Oh. <laughs> That's what goes in. That's far, not far. Gonna tie the Bowden tube to here. This this just um is a reverse Bowden. It's actually not extruding through this. This is just to guide the filament to the to the extruder on the carriage there. Let's boot it up. I have to look at this, the, the software now. It's got it's reading hot in temperature, bed temperature, fan speed, preheat, settings, move, home, printing, extrusion. So, see what the settings says EEPROM, config. We'll just see what some of these things are machine settings. Um, I'm just looking through the settings at the minute. I'll look at all these. Well, I've had the SB5 version 3 upgrade kit on for a few days now. Had a few little issues I'll, I'll, I'll raise, um, but it's printing and printing well. Probably the biggest letdown for me is the firmware. Um, no BL Touch, 3D Touch support, and messaged uh, two trees and they said it's still in development. So that's a bit disappointing. I may um, make my own firmware when I get a bit of time. But running out of it does print well. Um, this is a 28 minute benchy, which is a fairly rapid benchy. Um, you know, not excellent quality. If you slow it down, it does much better quality, but I want to see how it does at 300 millimeters a second. Not that it printed this at 300 millimeters, it's quite a small model. Um, calibration cube was printed a bit slower, and it's, it's excellent. It's near perfect on all sides. So. Um, had a little trouble bed leveling as usual because it's manual. Well, but not not real trouble um, and this is just a pencil holder I've printed that's a nice nice model I like to do and it's uh, printed in um, just under two hours so that's that's not too bad that's a, it's a gift for a friend so I did have a little bit of trouble with the extruder it was shaving the filament off as you can see really fine shaving um, so I had to pull it apart and deburr it clean it up take the really sharp edge off and now it's fine, doesn't shave any film at all and feeds much better. It was very difficult to get the filament in as well with that, that really sharp edge grabbing the filament. So can I recommend the kit? Not for the faint hearted I'd say. If you're not a tinkerer, it's not a bolt on kit and do. It's quite a bit of work to, to put in. Um, the instruction booklet that came with it is pretty poor. Um, two trees do have a video online which is better, um, but no commentary at all. It's definitely quieter. And faster, it does move faster than the um, the new pulleys have helped the belt noise. Uh, their belt alignment is slightly better, so there's no not as, nowhere near the noise the belts used to make. One of the positives of the firmware and the the TMC two double oh nine drivers is that their um, the current control by firmware, which is nice nice touch. But overall, it's it's good hardware, just not executed very well. Um, I'll be um, keeping an eye on the two tree site for updated firmware and I'll let you know how it's going down next time I do a video how it's printing but it seems to be printing very well at the moment if you like what you saw today why not like and subscribe if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below I'm Phil and this is Phil Talks Tech